So today we're going to be working on a version 2 gearbox. The gun that we're going to be working on uh, specifically is a G&G combat machine, although this is no particular um, model that G&G offers. In fact, this is a bit of an amalgam um, because we've got so many rental guns here and they're in and out for repairs every now and then. They don't always get put together in exactly the same factory specifications. So sometimes out of necessity and sometimes just out of sheer fun, we uh, put them together in random configurations like this, which is one of the great things about the M4s and the version 2s is that they're largely intercompatible and you can do a lot of mixing and matching. It's sort of like uh, Legos that shoot BBs. So the first thing we're going to want to do is remove the stock so that we can get into the MOSFET. This is an ETU style uh, GNG, which means it has a MOSFET uh, fire control computer thingy in the back of it. To get to that, we want to punch out this little detent, which allows you to rotate off the butt pad and get you access to the MOSFET. To remove the stock on this one, we just pull down the pin and remove the MOSFET, that or the MOSFET, the stock that way. Pull the pin down. The stock is withdrawn and that gives you access to the buffer tube. Inside of the buffer tube is a screw and if we look down in there, this is a Phillips head. So we'll need a Phillips driver to do that. Got one here. You generally need an extra long one in order to do that. Um, shorter screwdrivers won't be able to reach all the way in there. So we're going to want to get into the buffer tube and remove the screw. Sometimes these will be um, Phillips heads and sometimes these will be Allen screws inside of there. I'm trying to do this in such a way that you can actually see what I'm doing and I can see what I'm doing. So if I look a little clumsy with this, it's uh, kind of hard to do this while you're looking through a camera. So once that screw is taken out, you can remove the buffer tube. Um, with a MOSFET like this, there's essentially two connectors. One that connects to the MOSFET. This is sort of like a little data cable. And then there's also the positive and negative power going to the motor, which is right there. So once you've undone that, you can remove the MOSFET here, and then you can remove the buffer tube, and that leaves you with this here hanging out the back. We're just going to go ahead and pull off the little uh, sling mount there. Um, next thing you want to do is remove the upper from the gun. To do that, you want to just knock out the front receiver pin. Um, if it was an actual AR-15, you'd probably knock out the rear receiver pin, but because this is an airsoft gun, you knock out the front, and that allows you to slide the upper receiver off of the gun. Um, now that leaves us with the lower receiver. Now there's a number of ways you can go about this. There's no particular order that's absolutely necessary. Um, with this particular gun, it's got a little locking screw on the rear receiver pin, so we're going to take that off and pull the pin out. Generally speaking, when I take parts off, I like to put the parts somewhat back together. That way I'm not searching for the parts later on. And it's also nice to have one of these little magnetic dishes. It gives you a nice place to put all of your parts as you're working on it. Um, next thing we're going to do is remove the grip, which means we have to remove the motor mount. So we're going to need a small Phillips head screwdriver in order to do that. This ought to do the trick. So we're going to remove these two screws from the back of it here. Um, the plate on the bottom of the grip holds the motor in, and there's also two screws inside of the grip that attach the grip to the gearbox. One thing that a lot of people think is that the grip is attached to the receiver. The grip is actually uh, held in place by screws going into the gearbox. So we're going to remove the butt plate or the motor mount, whatever you want to call it, motor plate. Um, try not to fumble too much with my words on this. This style has a little uh, plate that sits in there that sits between the motor plate and the actual motor, which is necessary because if you look at the middle of the motor, there is a pin right there. That's actually the drive shaft that goes all the way up to the other end of the motor, and that spins as the motor spins. If that makes contact with this adjustment screw here, it can back the screw out and then your motor is all out of whack. So you need to have something in between the motor and the motor plate, which is a tiny little plate that's in there. We're gonna just use a pair of needle nose to get that out. So just reach in here, you could use a pair of tweezers. You can in fact just uh, you know remove the motor and then this would come out. Um, 
it's a small part and it's easy to lose. So I would generally say it once you take that out, put it in a place where you're not going to lose it. Um, at this point, we can disconnect the motor. There's a red and a black connector, which correspond to red and black connectors on the motor. Sometimes there's not a black, sometimes it's just red and nothing. So red is always your positive. Uh, the motor can be withdrawn. You don't want to rip the motor out. You want to jig jiggle it around until it comes out. One problem that a lot of people get into is that this can be like a little saw here and there are wires crossing over it, which we'll show you a little bit later. You don't want to pull this through those wires because then it'll sever the wires or cause a short. So don't force the motor out. Just jiggle it around until the motor comes free. Otherwise, you could damage the wires that are crossing over there. And we've got a little hack for um, how to fix that sort of problem in the future, which we will get to. There are two more screws down inside of there. These are sort of like little top hat screws. I'm not sure exactly what the uh, nomenclature is for the type of screws, but they have sort of a very wide head on them. So uh, in this case, where it's holding the um, grip on, it needs a little more um, purchase in order to hold the grip tightly, where if it's a smaller headed screw, it would probably pull through the plastic. So you could see these have a nice wide head on them. There's two of them. Some guns have four. You'll notice when you look at the bottom of the grip, there are four holes. You could have four screws in there. Um, generally speaking, you only need two. Usually in a diagonal configuration is all that's really necessary to hold this in place. So there's our grip. Next thing we're going to do is pull out the mag catch. It's a single screw style on this. There are some airsoft guns which will use um, an AR style or you know a real steel style in which case on those you need to do it like an actual AR-15 um, on this particular gun you just simply pull off the uh, mag button the, the push button for the mag catch and then the mag catch just falls out the other end on an actual AR style you would pull this out and then you would unthread it this way um, the this style is a little bit easier because then you don't have to worry about it getting caught on your your, you know, your uh, bolt catch or your ambidextrous mag catch. Um, once again, like I said, I like to just sort of reassemble these parts a little bit just so I've got everything in one place and it doesn't end up, you know, on the other side of the room by accident. The mag catch on this style is just simply, well, this style is actually pinned in place. There are some of them that just simply sit inside of there. Um, so, but it, it's a non-functional mag catch, so it just sits inside of the slot doesn't do anything it's just there for aesthetic purposes now we want to knock out the floral pin which is right here most of the time 99 percent of the time it's going to come out from right to left when you're looking at it this way or port or, or yeah starboard to port so you want to push it through this way once once you take it out you'll see why there's a little bit of knurling on one side of it. See how it's knurled on one side and not on the other? That knurling is what grabs the, the plastic on the receiver and holds it in place. I generally go through from this way whenever I'm re, you know, reassembling them. That way I know which way to knock it through. There are some guns that they'll just randomly put it in one way or the other. Um, if it feels like it's not coming out one way, just reverse it and try it the other way. Um, but most of the time it comes out from right to left. So once you've removed that pin, the uh, mag catch and the grip, the gearbox should be pretty free to just pull out of the receiver. So that gives you your gearbox. So as far as disassembling it goes, it's not a very complicated uh, procedure. You just take out all the screws. I'm going to use a uh, electric screw gun just to save some time here. You of course can do these by hand if you want. Um, I recommend if you are doing these to set the clutch on your uh, screw gun very low. That way you don't strip out the screws. You can hear that one's got a little bit extra torque on it. Um, you don't want to strip these out. Most of the time, because these are um, imported from foreign countries that don't always have the greatest quality standards, the screws are not always the best quality metal and can strip out pretty easily, which can be awfully irritating. So best bet is uh, don't, don't force anything. If it's not coming out easy, you know, maybe you need to go back with an actual screwdriver and back it out, get it started, and then you can remove it the rest of the way. Um, from here, we're going to go ahead and 
uh, separate the two halves of the gearbox. On a G&G, &G, um, they put the screws in from the left side of it, and you normally uh, disassemble it from the right side. Um, don't ask me why they reverse that, but that's how they do it. So other guns, they screw in from the opposite direction, but just for these, just to make things interesting, they screw theirs in from the port side of the gun. So we're going to flip this around, and now we can get into the other side of the gun. To uh, separate the two halves of the gun, usually you can just get a, get a sort of a grip on it. Some guys like to put something inside of the, uh, the spring guide to keep that from flying out. I generally find that G&Gs have good tolerances on them, and they don't always fly apart like that. But if you want to preempt that by putting something into there to hold the spring together, then you can just remove the halves of the gun, and it separates very easily like that. Um, I've, I'm in such a situation that when I take it apart, I've, I've taken apart so many of these that I don't even think about it because I'm, I'm perfectly... Uh, comfortable with what the spring is going to do so I can usually just get my fingers in there and, and remove the spring if I need to. Um, so now we're we have separated the two halves of the gearbox which is going to give us access to our shims. Um, if your gun was custom shimmed by somebody you know so that the the tolerances are specific you're going to want to keep the shims with the appropriate gear so that you don't have to go back and try to reshim it in any particular way. Um, otherwise, if if it was shimmed, you know, to a specific configuration, um, you may need to spend some time with with reassembling it if you get the order of these shims mixed up. Um, we'll do a whole nother video on shimming guns. I'm a little on the fence as to the the value of that much. Um, detail in assembling the guns. I generally think these guns for most purposes, there's a there's a basic shimming that you can do on them that I think is is adequate for most airsoft guns. Um, easiest thing to do from this point is just go ahead and remove the spring and the spring guide. That's these two guys here. Uh, we've got a whole nother video on springs. If you haven't seen that, it's a good idea to take a look at that so you can get an idea of um, different springs that are available for your gun. On a G&G &G gearbox, um, to remove the spring, you have to separate the, the uh, two halves of the gearbox this way. So if this is something you're thinking about doing, this video will come in handy for you. Now, when we look down here at the wires, you can see these wires cross over right here. This is where the motor fits in to the gearbox. So you can see there's a little bit of wear on the motor or on the wires from the motor wearing on them. This is one of the... Uh, sort of design flaws with most version 2 gearboxes that I see. Um, and we're going to get into a little hack that I have on um, sort of rerouting those wires so that it won't cause you trouble in the future. Um, the trigger is already pulled out, and this is the trigger spring, so we're going to set those two aside. This little uh, work mat here gives you nice little places to put things as you're working on it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and remove the piston and this is the tappet plate, the thing that's moving here. We're just going to pull this all out. Um, you'll notice that the tappet spring popped out, so we're just going to set that aside. So that is our cylinder, cylinder head, piston, tappet plate, and uh, nozzle. Which leaves us these parts inside of the gun. These are the gears. This is the bevel gear. And then we have, this is the sector gear and then we have the spur gear so these gears can all sit here um, i'm just going to put the shims back on this gear so that i know where they came from um, i don't see a lot of wear inside of this particular gun it's always good to do a little bit of greasing on it when you put it back together um, this little doohickey here this is your anti-reversal latch this hooks on to the bottom of your bevel gear and it hooks into these little notches and prevents the gear from running or the the gearbox from running backwards when you release the trigger so this has got a little spring on it which is about the size of a human hair so you don't whoops there it goes you don't want to lose that guy so you want to set that aside somewhere where you're not going to be fumbling around looking for it so on the g and g etu gearboxes you have two sets of wires you have essentially the power wires which are running down to your motor and then you have sort of a data cable that runs up to 
your trigger switch. This is a micro trigger switch. We're going to get into this in detail in a little bit. Um, but you can see both of the wires run down through here. And then G&G puts these little clips in there which sort of hold the wires in place, which makes it a lot easier to assemble the, the um, gearbox back together because the wires aren't flopping around in there. I know some guys that'll go in there and super glue the wires in place so they're not flopping around. Um, so taking them out sometimes is not the easiest. They can be hard to get to. I recommend a uh, dental pick style tool to get in there, just something that you can loop in underneath it to remove the uh, little clips. You could use a paper clip or you could use uh, a pair of tweezers maybe. Um, you can see these clips just come out. We'll just set that there. Pull this guy out here. And that gives us access to the wires, which we're just going to go ahead and pull out. These are the power wires running to the motor. We might actually put some shrink tubing on this area that's gotten worn. And then we have our data cable running to the trigger switch, which uh, this particular gun, somebody uh, did us the favor of gluing it in place. Um, obviously, it can be a bit of a pain in the neck to be taking these, uh, putting these back together when the wires won't go specifically where they're supposed to go. And we'll get into a little bit of that as we're reassembling the gun. So now that these wi this wire is removed, we can remove the trigger switch if we need to. So this just wire just simply comes out from under this little hook right here. Um, just take your screwdriver and remove the trigger switch. And this will just simply pop out like that. So at this point, this is pretty much as disassembled as a gun needs to be for you to work on it. If you're going to be putting in a new piston or something else, if it's just a situation where you're just putting a spring into it, it's obviously you don't have to completely strip the gun down to this point. Um, so, but just to go the full route, this is this is about as stripped down as you need to get. There are some other parts in there. There is your selector plate. There is your safety lever here. There's a spring on the safety lever, and there is also your cutoff lever. This is what uh, operates the semi-automatic function of the gun. Um, and there is a small spring that attaches from the selector to the cutoff lever, which operates that. Um, this being an ETU, this has got a slightly modified um, selector plate on it. So if this has an extra tab in here, then it will not work with this particular gun. This particular one, the tab, which normally would be right about here has been pulled out, which is perfectly normal for this particular gun. So there we are, we have a fully disassembled version two gearbox. As I said earlier, some people like to glue the wires in place with either super glue or hot melt glue, which can be okay, um, except for the fact that, it, you know, if this is not, you know, with airsoft guns, nothing is permanent. Eventually it's gonna break down again and you're gonna have to get back in there to fix it. And if you've glued it all together, it makes it an extra pain in the neck if you want to run wires back through there. Um, in this case, you can see there's a lot of glue and residue inside of the channel where the wire is going to run. So we need to get that cleaned out. You could get in there with like a dental pick and scrape away at it. Or maybe get in there with a razor blade and try to um, cut it out. Um, easier way might be to just take a Dremel with a wire wheel and just get inside of there and uh, work the work the gunk out, but you're going to want to clean it out. As far as re-gluing the wires into there, I'll leave that up to you guys to decide if it's worth it or not. I generally think that, you know, for the sake of um, assembling and disassembling the gun, it's better to just leave the glue out of there um, because it's, you're really just, you might be saving yourself time now, but you're going to be costing yourself time in the future when you need to take this back apart. And you can see it's not perfectly clean, but it at least gets some of the gunk out of there so that we can get the wires back through there. Um, and you'll notice that these bushings were rattling around a little bit, so we're just going to make sure those are all pressed in properly. So that's cleaned up enough for us to work on it. 